All right, my name is James Williams Jr. And I want to talk to y'all about a whole bunch of BS that's going on right now in the news. And, you know, um, a lot can be said about this because it involves two major stars. I would love to get to the pinnacle of their careers. I'll be lucky if I even have a career. So let me go ahead and break this down for you. The following video is probably not child appropriate, so if you are under 15... Please go watch something else, all right? You know, normally people would ask for your support and they would want you to watch this. However, it is not my job as an actor or an entertainer in any way, shape, or form to um, monitor what you are watching. But for two, if I'm going to have you watch my show, I would prefer you to be at a certain age level so that your maturity will understand what I'm talking about, all right? So without further ado, if you're 15 and up, this is for you. If you're 14 and down, get out of town. Okay, so as you know, people have been giving Barbara Streisand and um, Diana Ross a lot of flack for their Instagram posts and tweets and all this other stuff. And yes, I clearly need to get an Instagram when my career is going to be screwed. I clearly need to get a Twitter, Twitter, whatever the hell it is, and things like that. Which is why I said this isn't for kids. All right. First off, until the end of time, or until Michael Jackson magically finds a way to escape heaven or hell and come back and either unequivocally deny or unequivocally own the child molestation accusations, this is going to be a hot button topic. It's the same thing that's going to be said about R. Kelly until he either dies or owns it. Alright? The only people in that room with Michael Jackson molesting people was Michael Jackson and his alleged victims, all right? Now, it has been forwarded that all right, the famous kids that he hung with, you know, like Emmanuel Lewis and Macaulay Culkin, they said he never did shit to them, and that's their point of view, okay? Now, these other kids who um, claimed that he did something to them and had the documentary and all that stuff, and that's cool because, you know, that's their truth, and I'm not there. So I don't have an opinion, good or bad, in that whole situation, but I do have a voice to say what I'm going to say. Two things. There's three sides to every coin, all right? There's your side, there's my side, and then there's what actually happens. So the point of view somewhere in the spectrum of you and me totally got fracked up, all right? So that being said, when events take place, if there's not cameras all around, then... It's your word versus that other person's word. Now these young men have grown up, gotten married, and had their lives ripped apart. Some of them are being called liars or whatever. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't know them, and I don't care. But let me drop this on you. Because I'm not putting nothing past nobody. I, first off, where were their parents? Because I'm going to tell you right now. If my acting career takes off, there's two things that I'm never going to do, all right? Even if I have kids, there's no way in hell that they're spending a night at anybody's house and that anybody's spending a night at my house. Especially, let's say, my acting career gets me to the caliber of George Clooney or Dwayne The Rock Johnson or Carl Weathers or something like that. You know, I'm a working actor, and in this world, especially when it comes to celebrities, People do try to get celebrities for every dime they can get. So it's not like you can't invite your kid over to my house and have your kid tell tell everybody in the world that I put my finger in their ass or something. And, and, and that could have happened. You know, we weren't there, so we don't know. And on the devil's side of that, he could have done that. And so, like I said, the only way in hell that my kids are spending the night at anybody's house is if it's in a place set up like the real world, where there's cameras everywhere, including the bathroom. I say, because if they're bringing kids to my house, the first thing that's going to be said, there is a bathroom, there is a camera in every room in this house. There are 24 hours, and they don't cut off. I'm not editing shit, and I'm letting you know what's going on, because I'm going to protect myself. Nobody's kid's going to come to my house and say, Uncle James did this, or 
Mr. Williams, famous actor, put his hands in my ass and did some gay stuff. Because I'm not gay for one. And I don't think Michael was either. But at the same time, you got all this stuff going on where you have this side where everybody's for Michael. You got this side where everybody's against Michael. And you got my side. I'm in the middle. I like Michael Jackson's music. You know, I grew up on it. And his music doesn't always reflect the man behind closed doors. And that's the thing about celebrities. You know, a celebrity will tell you, and as a up-and-coming actor who has not been discovered or undiscovered talent as I am, a, a celebrity will tell you, you know, that there is always someone that's going to be out for you on some level or another. Because people know when you have money that there's a way that you cannot have money. All right? And the thing with that is, you know, as a celebrity, I'm going to tell you, Michael's biggest mistake was inviting kids into his home. So let me flip it back. Again, there has to be some fault taken in by the parents. There has to be some negligence taken in by the parents. He's Michael Jackson. Y'all don't know that man? And you're going to leave your kids in his possession because he's a celebrity and he's famous? It's like me leaving my kids with fucking Charles Manson. Really? He never actually killed anybody. But he had a presence to make other people do it for him. And yet he spent his entire life in jail and never cut a person up. Never did anything to Miss Tate or any of that. No disrespect to the family. But the facts are the truth. He basically went to jail for having Charles Xavier powers over a bunch of idiots that did his dirty work. And that's just the way it is. And so the parents that left the kids with Michael Jackson... What the fuck were you thinking? He's a celebrity. He's not going to do anything. Let me say it again. Well, let me put it as Eddie Murphy said it in one of his comedy specials. Shout out to Eddie Murphy, by the way, because he's a badass. But he said it plain and simple in one of his comedy specials. Y'all don't know Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson might be a bad motherfucker behind closed doors. And like, you know... And same thing when he made the, the gay references to Mr. T. It was that video, whichever one that was. I think he was in a red suit. But, you know, I'm using that as, as my idiom to say what I'm saying. Because, you know, he said, y'all don't know if Michael Jackson's a bad motherfucker behind closed doors. He might be smacking people around. Shut up, Tito. You know, that kind of thing. You don't know. Now, the Jackson 5 and the Jackson family knew. But we, as society, the fans... The friends, you don't know how somebody is behind closed doors. No. Because up until What's Love got to do with it, I never knew Tina Turner was raped. I never knew Tina Turner was abused. I never knew nothing about Tina Turner except for that she was one hellacious, delicious black woman that could sing her ass off. Alright? That's all I knew. Because I'm a fan. I didn't know nothing else about Tina Turner. She sings one of my favorite James Bond songs, Golden Eye. But at the same time, I'm not going to leave my children with Tina Turner before I truly get to know her. And I ain't saying Tina Turner would rape or molest my kids, but I also don't have kids. If I'm going to leave anybody with Tina Turner, it's going to be me. Have y'all seen those legs? Okay, all jokes aside, I love you, Tina. But the, the thing is, you know, the children being molested by a celebrity, I ain't saying it couldn't happen. I ain't saying it did happen. But I'm saying that that's more of the parents' fault for one, where the hell was your brain? Yeah, I'm not leaving my kids with nobody. And, and, and granted, people are molested by strangers and more by family than anybody else because they have access to them. Why would you think that you could leave your child with a celebrity and think that, oh, well, nothing's going to happen? You can't put nothing past nobody, you know. And, and, and that's the end of that, you know, because... Those guys, they're married, they're happy, whatever. I didn't watch the documentary because Michael's dead. You can't pull seeds from a dead man's penis. It's not going to happen. He's dead, he's gone. Now, let's switch gears. Same bullshit with R. Kelly. Now, okay, he married 13-year-old Leah. All right? That was, um... 
that was some real fracked up ass shit. And again, I have to say it, I hate to say it, but there was some parental neglect there. And then all of a sudden, before Aaliyah dies, they got a divorce. Her career is way up here, even better than his, and she's rocking it, and we all miss her terribly. And all of a sudden, these damn sex tapes come out with R. Kelly. Like, mad sex tapes. Like, three or four of them some bitches, and I only seen one videotape at the VHS with all of them on there. Now, since I don't see R. Kelly's face day after day after day, for me, that could have just been any old black porn star with an R. Kelly look. Because at the time, he didn't have, like, the dreads or whatever the hell on the video I saw. He just had curlyish, blackish hair. So it could have been anybody. And I wasn't really looking at it for R. Kelly. I was looking at it for the hot black chicks that were underage. So apparently, that's been a factor. And it's come back to bite him in the ass over and over and over. Now, this guy's 52 years old, so he's a little bit older than me. I don't understand how the hell he can't read or write, but he can write music. That's some shit that has bewildered me. I have reading disability issues, but I wrote a graphic novel. Now, I'm still looking for a publisher, by the way. I mention that on every video I make. So if anybody's out there, you know, I need a publisher for my Love 13. Anyway, the whole point of the matter is, when you are a celebrity, you are a high-powered target. Another example, Halle Berry had a car accident many, many years ago. And until the person found out that she was the Halle Berry, it wasn't a problem. But once he found out that it was the Halle Berry, oh, his lawsuit went from down here to up here. So like I said, when you are a celebrity, everyone is out to find a way to dig into your pockets. You know? And I ain't talking like just management, the IRS, and your homes and stuff that Red Fox and them lost. You know, or Mike Tyson or anybody else that's had some issues. I'm talking about everybody. You don't really know in this business who's for you and who's not. You know, the people that are with you from the beginning when you ain't got shit to when you have shit, those ride or die people, yeah, they're good. But even then, you don't keep their children. Period. Under no circumstances whatsoever, you don't keep their kids because you just don't know what a kid is going to say. And if you're going to keep their kids, you mobilize every room with cameras, with a 50 meter spread. So from top to bottom, everywhere in the room, there's a camera. So if they say something, you got it all recorded, you know, so that way they were like, look, I record everything. My whole house is live streaming all the time, you know, so you ain't catch me doing shit with none of these kids. There's not a room in my house that doesn't have a camera in it. And the reason I say that is because if I ever have my career take off where I can build my own house, you better believe that there will be security cameras every fucking where. Because I want to protect myself. Now, for the R. Kelly thing. You know, dude has, has hit the shit out of Luck Creek one too many times, and then you got everybody who's boycotting his music. And that same thing is going on with Michael Jackson, and that's why I compared them together in this video. Now, in the thing, you know, they got Paris going through a whole bunch of shit, and same with Blanket and the other child. And, you know, leave the kids the fuck out of it, all right? They got enough problems. And, you know, being a celebrity doesn't mean that your children get the same treatment as you. You know, just ask Tiffany Trump about that one because nobody really likes her father but them, you know. But somehow he's weaseled his ass into the White House and he's got full control. But I'm going to tell you, you know, when you are a celebrity, you are in the most dangerous spots of your life because if, if you're a big celebrity, you know, everybody's out for that dough. In, in, in closing... I want to talk about the last thing I seen on the news about um, the Fuller House lady and Dr. Dre. All right, see that's some more stuff that's happening right now. That you know, it seems like the other rich people aren't being as exploited as Full House's Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman. It's like if they weren't celebrities, they wouldn't be so high profiled as the rest of the rich ass people that are got got their indictments or whatever, and I'm thinking to myself, 
why are they so hard on the celebrities when there are people who are richer than the celebrities and you're not, like, blasting their faces all over the place? So that goes to what I'm saying about being a celebrity. You have your perks and you have your non-perks. And the thing with that is you have to take the good with the bad. If you can't take the good with the bad, this business really isn't for you. Right now, I'm at the very, very bad. I'm not discovered. No one's really watching my YouTube channels. I'm having family issues and not because I don't have kids. I don't have kids. It's not that kind of family issues I'm having. Just family issues in general. And the things that my life has been wasted on has kind of pissed me off. You know, I made a video about that. If you guys can check that out, it's fine. I would prefer my family, especially the Fantastic Four, who have just like cut me completely off and flossed in front of my face even though they all owe me money. They need to check out that video. Anyway, that being said, as a celebrity, you know, you always going to have to remember, no matter how deep or non-deep your pockets are, like mine, I do not have deep pockets. You might find some lint in there. But, you know, whenever you're a celebrity, someone's out to get you. Even the guy I mentioned, Eddie Murphy, has had some issues with other things in the past that have come back to bite him in the ass, you know. Uh transgender hitchhiker or some bull crap like that many years ago and don't get me wrong i love eddie murphy and i love tina turner i love all the celebrities that i mentioned and yes i will still listen to michael jackson music and if you've listened to any uh, movie soundtracks in the last 15 years you may have been listening to r kelly and just don't know it because um a lot of his movie soundtracks like for batman when um he did gotham city he did uh, I'm the Greatest for the Ali movie with Will Smith and them. You know, I'm that little piece of hope when your back's against the rope. Can you hear I'm the Greatest? I didn't do that completely right just so that he won't try to sue me for money that I don't have. But, you know, in his defense, you know, when, when you are a celebrity, you walk on eggshells every day. I'm closing out on that. Celebrities walk on eggshells every day. Try to remember that. Because you never know when you may be that celebrity who's walking on eggshells. Well, here's a tip for you. I walk on eggshells and I'm not discovered yet. So I'm exceptionally careful with the things that I do. I'm James Williams. Please come back with number two. Be seeing you.